few years back we found this book it's an old Swedish book it's at least it's written about 50 years ago but the stories in it it's a, is up to a hundred years old and it's based on memories from Sami people who uh, spent years and years exploring these grounds and this particular place was uh, named Haukalukta by them because of uh, the big assets of pike that was here. And this man who had this place as a memory uh, was named Sven and he knew both my father and Bjorni's father and they heard the stories in person and we will never know if the stories are true or not but we are here to try to find out. Tomorrow we're heading out in the wilderness to uh, try to find some big, big pike. Today is the 23rd of June and when we left uh, the civilization it was summer. It was at least 20 degrees Celsius and now when we landed here we were amazed by how much snow it is on certain places. Uh, where the snow still lies it's uh, at least a meter, meter of snow. Uh, the birches they haven't even blossomed yet and if you compare it to the birches down in, in the civilization it's there in full bloom and it's summer there, and here it's winter. Okay, so right now we've been uh, Running for one and a half hour, yeah. rowing for one hour, and um, now there's three more hours of running. We're going up to that snow up there, and uh, feel pretty good, right? Yeah, we're we're happy. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> We found the guys. That's so nice. Yeah. It's indescribable. I'm so happy. Yeah. We saw a canoe standing up right up from the from the shore. So it, it was pretty easy to see them. Although it's like five kilometers down downhill. Now it nothing matters. Yeah. We know that they're there and that's so freaking amazing. Yeah. During this adventure we were seven guys out paddling and uh, we had so much gear and uh, just gas filming gear and everything that we had. We had to have two guys running up <clears throat> for 30 kilometers, rowing for five kilometers and uh, the reason I ran up was because Bjarni got sick and the only, thi the only thing we could do was to um, 
have someone else running. Det är lite ben i det, men det är bra. Kan jävla mars alltså. That was the fucking walk from hell. We usually travel together uh, as a team, us free water boys. But this time we, we brought with us two friends. One, one of them is a, a childhood friend of mine, Bjorn. And we have been fishing a lot in, the, in these kind of areas before together. And uh, Joan as well. Uh, and hopefully they will bring a lot of experience to the team. So in this book that we found where there's a chapter about Sven. It's his stories that are guiding us through these areas, kind of. And um, his stories when he lived off of this land, fishing, hunting, gathering. This land was his fuel to survive. There are stories of him winter fishing in these lakes. And then he caught a hundred kilo of pike in his sled, and then he skied off with them about 110 kilometers to the closest market. And um, according to the stories, a hundred kilo of pike was only four or five pikes, and then <laughs> he didn't fit anymore. När jag var hemma på vintrarna fiskade jag i sjöarna här omkring. En vinter satt jag ut gäddsaxar i Haukalukta och fick mycket stora gäddor. Jag fick gäddor på 12 och 15 kilo. Den vintern kallade jag gäddor som vägde 5 kilo för små gäddor. Men jag fick aldrig veta vad den största gäddan vägde. Jag hade ett 20 kilos bästman med mig men den räckte inte till för att väga. Jag skickade alltid fiskarna och frusna ner till Strömbäck i Jokkmokk. Man fick aldrig veta om man fick sälja dem. Ingen vill ju ha sådana stora gäddor. Woho! Det är typ en sexa! Den är fin ju! Nej, sexa är det. Det är en smink. Woho! Hey! Jävlar vad cool den är! It's a fucking leopard man! Pretty skinny då. First fish for you, my friend. Yeah, man. It's so nice. <laughs> Me and Eric have been struggling pretty hard to get a bite, so. And this, I would say, is such an, like, to the looks, it's the worst place ever for a pike. Okay, so we're at the top of the system right now, and if you look around, it feels like you're in the Arctic, I don't know, yeah, in the Arctic, basically. It's just crazy, the pikes have, uh, I don't know what you call it, the pattern of the, the colors on the belly and on the back. And they are pretty amazing. I don't know, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of pike, but there might be some big ass pikes around. If you look at the the bait fish, compared to the fishing back home, this is nothing like it. We we fish on just muddy, flat spots, and I don't know. The pike is so random here; they could be anywhere. You have no idea. I I guess we caught pike on the shallow water, in the deep water, just below the surface. And there's not a lot of them, but it feels like they bite as soon as they see a, or, an artificial bait. Nice! On the double schnauz. I took the seas in the avel, also. Ja, det såg så jävla grov ut när det kom under båten. Joho! Vi såg en pike just porked right under the canoe. Like, 
It's not even a meter deep. It was just standing there. So I put my shore, my shore bait down and he took it and spit it out. Then I switched to my uh, big bait rod and I uh, hooked him in the, I hooked him right away. It's maybe a five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's bigger. It's, it's bigger than it's five. It's bigger than five? Yeah. It's faster Definitely. than the last one. You can see if I can land this baby. It's coming in upside down. Yeah, we have it. Right in the money maker. All right. Now we're talking. The thing is they could probably grow fat, I don't know, because there's a lot of big grayling and um, big bait fish in general. So I don't, it's so hard to say, but I think we're going to move camp pretty soon to try another lake because it's not the fishing we came for, I would say. I don't know. So we decided a couple of days ago that um, we should move camp because the fishing sucked in that lake. And um, so we said, oh, we might as well move while the weather is good. So we all agreed to that. We packed together our tents and all the food and all that. And um, rode our boats a while and then a hike started because it was the white water was too extreme for us in our canoes with all the packing so we decided to hike with the stuff about a kilometer and right when we started carrying just extremely heavy bags just the rain started and it just got more and more intense after a while we were just totally drenched all of us we had half our stuff at one place and half our stuff a kilometer away hey, 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 hey. So we have moved our canoes and everything to the next lake. Fucking hell. Cold as hell, it's raining, and we need food, and we need shelter. It's just freaking crazy, isn't it? We had to hurry up and we put up the tent under a tarp so we could leave the inside of the tent dry and now it was some intense weather. We thought the weather was good so we moved camp but I guess we had wrong. Oh, I'm so freaking cold. This is the... It's a Thursday and we've been here for like four days now and it's been raining the last three days. And right now it's so cold. I'm freezing. I just got my oatmeal ready. And I'm hungry, but I'm tired of this rain. And it's so cold. So um, the other day we were searching for some pike areas, me and Yuan, and um, so we were just trolling right then because we were going to change bays. And um, so first Yuan catches a trout on the platypus, which is a pretty big lure. It's probably like 15 centimeters. It was a 1.8 kilo, I think. And we were just like stoked, like why is this, why is this trout hitting such a huge lure? Beautiful trout. Yeah, really beautiful. So we take some pictures of it and then about 20 minutes later it happens again and then it's a huge trout that hits you once platypus again actually when he's just when he's casting Notice when it's about a couple meters from the boat, it's a trout, this huge trout, and we just scream and. <laughs> then 
then uh, when I tailed the trout, we're just like, we were like paralyzed on how huge it is. So we, uh, yeah, we kind of forget what we're doing, I guess, and lose concentration. And we almost tip with the boat. The trout goes crazy. So I lose the trout, and the trout just flops around in the boat until it gets stuck in Yuwon's waders. And he's just, I mean, it's extremely lucky that we didn't tip and that Yuwon didn't get a huge hook in his thigh. Even worse, he could have gotten his dick, but. <laughs> you know, it's not far. <laughs> Just caught the, this beautiful trout on a 75 centimeters on a platypus. The first cast, pretty insane. So uh, it's just amazing how beautiful it is. Let's so, let's put it back. Yeah, we're going it's to put beautiful it back. trout. I mean, this trout was huge. Uh, it was 75 centimeters and was, I mean, it's the, the biggest trout I've ever seen in my life. So it's a, it's a big deal for me when I've been trout fishing for, for my whole life. And I mean, now pike fishing is the, the thing for me. Uh, pike is the, the species I go hunting. I've fished a lot of pike in the mountains in the north of Sweden, but uh, not, not this remote. And I know that uh, the pikes can grow really big in these kind of waters. We have a lot of white fish and uh, grayling and stuff. So, uh, I mean, we know that there are big pikes in these areas. Snow everywhere, it's kind of cold, and we haven't find, found the pike yet. Uh, we find some small pike, and but not the big pike that we want. And I, I'm get, getting a little bit nervous because uh, we only got like eight or nine days left here. And if the weather's gonna be better tomorrow, I think we're going down to another lake. What do you think, Chris? I don't know, it's hard to say. I, Like we talked about, I would not be up here if I was a pike. It's, uh, it's so, everything is dead, kind of. It's just snow, rocks, and mud. Hopefully the weather's gonna be better tomorrow so we can move to another lake. Yeah, we need to find the warm water to get some pikey water. Yeah. All right, good night everyone. Jag hade inte tid att sikta ordentligt. Björnen höll på att försvinna bakom en backe och jag sköt men träffade ett ben. När Björnen kände att han blev skadad vände han och anföll mig. Han kom rätt emot mig. Jag försökte skjuta ett nytt skott men växlade för snabbt. Hylsan och patronen fastnade i bredd med varandra i magasinet. Nu var björnen bara 10 meter framför mig och jag tänkte, nu, nu måste jag fly. Jag springer nerför. Nedanför mig fanns en brant stenhäll som jag åkte utför på ryggen. Jag försökte ta emot mig med geväret och tur var väl det. Jag stötte i kolven och både hylsan och patronen ramlade ur geväret. När skorna tog emot jorden igen kunde jag växla in en ny patron. Björnen kom skrickande precis efter mig utför klippan. Jag satte pipan i bogen på honom. 
och tryckte av ett skott. Han slog våld och jag sköt ett till. Hade inte hylsan och patronen stött sig i väret hade jag blivit björnmat. We're moving to another lake. We need to go down a little bit, so we got some small streams or what you call it that we need to go over with a canoe and that's gonna be kind of hard I think and we got so much bags and stuff that we need to take with us so we need to be really careful. We have never been here before, so we have no idea how, how the terrain and stuff like that is. So we had to do some uh, rafting to get down with the canoes. Yeah, but we're going to take it. I think it's here. Oh, jävla Stenberg, what the hell? Oh, jävla. We have about a eight kilometer stretch and we thought it was calm water and uh, so far we've maybe it's an hour or two and we moved yeah. max a kilometer. Yeah, max. We've been... We're not able to drag the canoe with the rope. No. It's not possible. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just scared of these, like the curves. I don't mind that there's the small rapids, it's just the curves. If someone goes in with the front and then the canoe turns and you're backwards, I don't know. The paddling we had yesterday was uh, much more than we expected. It was so gnarly sometimes. I don't know, I was seen scared just to go down some smaller rapids because of the reason we have so much gear and it's kind of expensive and we're far out. It could have gone really bad and I'm very glad we made it down here. It could have been a disaster because uh, <laughs> we had like cameras for around 100,000 crowns in our canoe, but we didn't thought about that. But this time it went good. So this is Sven's summer house, as you can call it. There's a story of Sven and, when his, and his brother, how they pulled a boat here, about 250 vertical meters straight up a creek, and um, fished in this lake for whitefish, and sold it down at the market. 
And he lived in this little cottage or tent or whatever you want to call it. It's probably built for 60, 70, 80 years ago. And it's still standing. Look what I find. New Optimus. God. It's so sick how people could That's go up I here and live here even during the winters. It's un unbelievable actually. It's crazy. People back in the days must have been so tough. We're just a couple of small birds in the wild. This is what we call small pike in this lake. I just found it up in the wetlands. What do you think guys? Probably around 8 to 10 kilos, something. And tomorrow we're fishing this lake and now we know that there's big pikes around. Pike, 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 Yesterday we got down to the lake and we found the pike. We found a lot of them. We found a super nice bay where there were a lot of pike and uh, some of them which were probably over 100 centimeters. Beauty! But the thing is, we didn't find the big ones like uh, 110 plus and the fatter with more girth. Half moon. Near moon four. And a little rocket with the camera man. Photographen. Photographen should have more, also. pike fishing and got sick of it because we didn't get in the pike so we changed tactic and rods started fishing for grayling yeah 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 this is definitely a nice fish is it a big one yeah this is a good one <laughs> it has to be one kilo yeah, this is one kilo plus, for sure. Nice fight. Is that grayling? Yeah, it's a grayling. Man, it's taking a lot. 
Well, it's smaller than I thought, though. Nice. Hey, guys. What? Nice color. Yeah. Beauty. Really. That's a beauty, man. Yeah, it's a beauty. I love these fish. They are so beautiful. With a sail and everything. I look at that fin. Oh, me and Marcus is just uh, we found tracked, this little tracked hey, a little. Any comments, Miss Lemming? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no comments. Today is actually my birthday. The day everyone forgot, except my good friends. And thank God they didn't forget it, because if they would, we wouldn't have drinking um, Fireball. And if we wouldn't have done that, we wouldn't have found out that we catch the pike during the night. Because yesterday was the craziest night ever in my pike fishing history. Nice pipe. What the? 
fucking air, les rigs Okay, so we have a bag of... What happened, yo? Oh, yeah. This is the most craziest thing I ever seen in my whole life. I just came down to wash my hands here and I saw this pike just laying on the shore right here. So who hooked it at? He swallowed the bag. Yeah. Take the bag and show the bag for the camera. Oh, it fell off. That's sick. Oh. I'm going fast like that. As a sick Johnny, El Capitano. I don't know what happened. Something went very wrong down at the down at the lake. That pike ate a freaking plastic bag, and I I didn't think that could happen. It's just insane. And then it bites the lure as well. It's. Jag gick upp till stugan som var full i folk och sa Nu har båtmotorn gått åt helvete. Klockan åtta i morgon är avgångstid. Om vi kommer iväg åtta, det vet jag inte. Men då blir det imorgon allt. Jag hade en egen ny båtmotor nere i Ritzemjok och gick dit för att hämta den. Gamla tidens motorer var tunga. Min motor, den vägde 78 kilo. Men jag tog den på ryggen och bar den nästan två mil till Cites i stugan. Halv sju på morgonen var jag framme. Jag gick in i stugan och kokade kaffe. Det som bodde i mitt rum vaknade och jag sa Nu jävlar anamma kan ni få åka om ni vill. Jag har en egen motor här och den går. Klockan åtta var vi. We're leaving. Because, uh, well, uh, we had a plan, it didn't really work out for us. We couldn't find the bigger pike. We, we have looked everywhere, we have fished five lakes now, and they are absent. We don't know where they are. We have seen one big one, uh, and he, uh, he didn't want to bite, so, yeah, the, the new plan is to go follow Sven's tracks. Because we know he, he has a house down in the valley on the other side of the mountains here. So we're traveling about 200 meters closer, down closer to the sea. Right now we have about seven kilometers of uh, quite gnarly terrain to go through. Uh, we'll head over the stream here and walk from the other side. And then we'll have mostly downwards walking. So it's, hopefully it will be quite, quite easy walk. Walked like three hours through the woods, and it's, uh, I think it just was uh, like uh, one Swedish mile, but uh, it felt like a lot much more. There were no roads, no tracks, not ever, no everything. But now we're here, we're just gonna paddle over the lake. Then we are at Uncle Steve's home. <laughs> <laughs> Sven, he was a guy who could kill a bear with his bare hands. He was a guy who could stop a running moose by flicking his fingers. He was also a guy who could make any pike shiver by whipping his magic fishing rod. I don't know if this Sven guy was a magician or something, but he sure as hell knew something that we don't. Oh, 
Damn it, man! Nice back. We are always searching for the pike, but uh, we always want to twist it a little bit and mix it up with adventure and see things that people don't see that often and try new things instead of the same old waters. It's a beauty. Look at this back. Nice, nice. To get to do this with the canoe in rapids, with the trouts and graylings and crazy hikes and everything, that's, that's how I want to bike fish. The thing I love most about being out here is that you don't know what to expect. We came here for the pike, but we leave here with the great, me greatest memories of the nature and the, the experience of, of being out here is, is far enough.